not loving what I'm seeing on my face. I really don't. Hi friends! Welcome back to my channel and welcome to a second chance video with BoxyCharm items. I recently did my half year review with BoxyCharm slash Ipsy and while that was um, a long video, I know, and thank you so much if you bared with me through that entire thing because that was six months worth of products and I don't have a lot left from some of those months, well, a decent amount of those months, because I did a big declutter and I really have just been very brutal on the things that I'm loving and using versus the things that I just need to keep out of my collection. And today is going to be a little extension of that. This is going to be second chance try-ons with you to let you know kind of where I'm at with things, get things a second go and see, do I need to keep them? Should I keep them? Do I like them? Or is this something that should be in my next round of decluttering? Is something going to get decluttered on camera? We don't know. I cannot predict the future, but you, you, you just, it could happen. I'm just saying it could. So grab your tea, grab your snack, grab your water, get comfy, and let's dive into this video together. Cheers! I am being bad and actually having a soda today. I rarely have a soda during the day, but your girl's tired, so that's what we're doing. This morning, I actually started my face already with some of these products because some of them are skincare or things that you can't really see until I put on other things. Starting with the Koa Life Skincare, this is a booster. This is something that's supposed to help your other skincare, but also help with hydration, reduce the signs of aging, blemish control. I have this down first today. So I'm hoping anything else I do to my skin will not have a breakout because your girl has been having a rough summer with my skin, unfortunately. And I think it is from some cream products, maybe some skincare I've been trying. So since this says it's supposed to have blemish control, I'm hopeful. I also have on some of this e.l.f. primer. I truly forgot this was part of a boxy charm because it came in an ipsy bag. And now those two are kind of like synonymous. They are together. This is the Power Grip Primer with 4% niacinamide. This one is super duper sticky. So it really holds on to the foundations that I do have on right now. Now I did already have on a touch of my Milk Hydro Primer. This is something new I'm trying in my collection when I was like, wait, 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 this was a BoxyCharm slash Ipsy item. Let's put this on. So I do have this on in my targeted trouble areas. So I'm hopeful things stay on, things look great. So I just have on some of my favorite foundations and concealers, but I have not powdered. No, because what we're going to be doing next is going to be going into some creams. So I'm hoping all of these base things work well with the creams, the foundation and the concealer look like they normally do. They look great. They look fine. So this is where the test is really going to get going. And I'm trying to decide what product to do honestly when it comes to these creams. In my recent video, I did put on the Ciate London blush and it looks like a sunburn on my face. It was so bold. And with the power of other makeup and wearing things down a little bit with some sponges, I was able to make it all look nice, but I already know this is pretty bold for me and I'm probably the tannest I usually am in the summertime. So I was like, ooh, this is pretty bold. So I think what I'm gonna do today is go into this Drunk Elephant blush because honestly, I have not used her much, but I'm super intrigued to try the bronzing version of this. So I thought, well, I should probably know if I like this first. And it does say shake well before use. I've seen a lot of their glowy bronzy drops being a big thing this summer. So I was like, well, I do have the blush. I haven't really touched it since I received this. So let's find out how we like her. And then I will go in with this caramel bronzer from Anastasia. I just, you guys, I think the last time I tried this, it looked really orange on me and I had to do a lot of blending. So we shall see, <laughs> we shall see. Trying to think of the best way to use this. I did try it before with a serum and it looked splotchy on me. So I think today what I will do is just use it like a regular blush and well, a regular liquid blush. And I think I'll just do it on the fingertips. Woo! Did I just splash this everywhere? I don't know. This color is way more approachable than the other color that I have. I don't remember it having too many like issues with texture or anything when I used it last. So I'm just kind of like popping it on and then working the product in. I'm layering. I'm layering up definitely more than I would the other product. 
that I had from Ciate London that really became a sunburn look really quickly. That's not my favorite look to do. I am going to touch onto the nose here because I can see if this works for me. I did, uh oh, starting to move the makeup on the nose. This may be a problem. We're going to see. It might be a little too pale for me at the moment. On my viewfinder right now, it does look pretty pale, like I'm not seeing much other than maybe some shininess, whereas in person, I do see the rosiness. And it does look very dewy, which can be a little scary for me up in this front area, but we're gonna play through it. We're gonna let the play develop. I don't know if you see it so well in my viewfinder, but I do see it in person, but it is fairly fair. So if you like a lot of blush, which I know blush is still having a bit of a moment, um, this may not be enough for you. Honestly, I don't even know if it's enough for me at the moment because it is very light, very, very light. So, all right, I'm gonna do less of this Ciate London blush and I'm gonna just focus it from like here to here-ish, maybe here back and kind of get an idea, but I'm only gonna do one drop. Last time I did two on each cheek and that was too much. Use some of this on each side. That's what we'll do. And then we'll use a clean finger to blend. I kind of like the color this diffuses to. It's just, oof, it's so pigmented and it's so dark. I'm not a big cream liquid person in general when it comes to some face products because of my skin texture, but also my skin type being oily with bossy pores. Also, I'm, I'm such a creature of habit of how I do my makeup that I can really whip through my makeup in the morning if I don't have a ton of time or I don't want to take a lot of time to do my makeup. So I feel like powders are just quicker for me personally. So this is something I have to stop and be mindful about. I'm not going to do the nose simply because I'm worried I will look like Rudolph. And I still have a bunch on my pointer finger here where I put the product. So this isn't even me like using up all the product. And I definitely see a ton more rosiness. And I, I can definitely see it in the viewfinder as well. So I'm hoping you can see that. It doesn't look textured though. I'm hoping that the shine is not too much once I powder down. So that's where I'm going to stop. I'm going to wipe off what is left. It's interesting. It's like, I feel like I'm in Goldilocks and the three blushes. It's like, this one is too pale. This one is too dark. I need one in the middle that's just right. All right, I'm a little nervous about this in Anastasia bronzer. This is the cream bronzer in caramel. Unfortunately, when Ipsy slash BoxyCharm was giving these out in the subscription boxes, according to what we saw online and what other people were receiving, they only received like a few shades. So they didn't get like the full run line for coloration. There was, I think, mostly this and then some deeper shades. I think this was the lightest you could go. I would assume they sell them lighter, but who knows? I do not right now off the top of my head but I'm going to try this. I have a feeling I'm gonna need my sponge to blend, so I'm having everything on deck because if I remember correctly, this went really orange. Just this bit on the brush definitely looks orange. Ooh, oh, it's definitely looking orange. In person, for sure, it looks orange. Ooh. I may have to switch up my brush technique here. So I definitely don't want to do my nose with this. Doing something a little bit more narrow, not something as wide of a brush, but oof, I have to be careful that the pigment doesn't go too crazy. So I'm gonna tap a little off, maybe more than a little. So orange. Why do I still have this? Like I said, I'm probably the tannest I'm gonna be. It is July. And I'm sure once I powder down, I can make things blend a bit better. But right now, really not loving how this is looking on my skin in person. I have more of a neutral undertone. And this is just pulling orange. It's too warm. It's um, got too much maybe of a orangey red base to it that it's not going to compliment me. Yeah, this is very Oompa Loompa for your girl here. And now all I'm seeing is like a pretty vibrant pink and then some orange here. So I'm kind of feeling like a summer popsicle, little dream sickle moment here. And so I'm just going to um, close this up. Not loving what I'm seeing on my face. I really don't. But we're going to keep going. I do have some other bronzers on deck that 
hopefully are more my skin tone, but there's stuff I have not been using, stuff that has made it through my declutters just for me to try, and these are pretty deep. These are the ones that I was like, okay, some of these could be great, so we're gonna probably find out. First, I need to powder down this mess and see what I can do to maybe salvage this before I move on, because I think that's all my creams, yes? Cream, cream, cream. Did all the creams. I'll be right back. I just did a very light powder down with my CoverGirl powder, and I think it's still feeling very tacky. It's still feeling very sticky. I do usually use two powders though, one to go under the eyes and down the nose, and then one for all over the face. I did use this CoverGirl all over the face, but I'm still feeling really sticky through it. And I have, I am noticing my nose looks like it's kind of breaking apart. It does not look as good as it normally does with this foundation that I'm using because it's my cover girl. I know I can trust it. I love it. The nose is definitely breaking apart on the nose from when I was trying to do some work on that. So to try to set myself up for the best success, I'm going to use another BoxyCharm product that I love for a powder before I move on to these bronzers I was telling you about. This is my Fenty Pro Filter Powder in the shade Cashew. It is a glorious powder. I really love this. It is my diehard go-to staple favorite. I really love using it in the summer because it is a perfect color for me. And I'm hoping it'll help. Well, by perfect color, I do mean it looks like a suntan a little bit. So it does give a little bit of warmth too, but I'm also trying to make sure I'm not gonna have too much stickiness. Oh, yeah, I'm so disappointed in how this nose is breaking apart. Could be a combination, honestly. I'm not 100% right this second. I have used this primer before, though, and it was pretty good. I'm wondering if it is the fact that I did try just on my skin type to put a blush that's a creamy liquid on my nose because it is just not it is looking like it's breaking apart in person. I still see the rosiness on my cheeks. The cheeks aren't looking too textured or anything, so I am gonna just move forward. I'm still feeling a bit attacked through all this. I'm gonna powder down even though a bit more in the areas I don't want too much color. I'm just gonna use a different powder for that, and then we're gonna jump into the bronzer. I did a good amount of powder, y'all. Um, So let's move on now to a bronzer. The question is, which one are we gonna do? Because I have the Vesa here, and then I have a Ciate London. Now, I know the Ciate London is, you're like, isn't that the same color as this? Yes, but because it's a powder, it blends down. And it does have some shimmer to it. That can be good, that can be bad, it just kind of depends. Let's see the Vesa. This one is also pretty dark, but it's not as orange red tone. It's more of a tan color. And honestly, I need to decide, am I going to use or lose these products because they have been sitting in my drawer going, okay, these could be good for summer. We're here, it's summer, right? All right, so maybe we'll do one on one cheek, one on the other. Should we do that? Should we go rogue like that and just be like, let's see which one works the best? I may be mix matchy for the day, but I don't think I have any on camera meetings other than this, so this should be fun. I have a feeling I know which one's gonna work better just, just from looking at it. Let's try the Vesa. This one doesn't have any shimmer. It is a dark tan color. This one is the shade Kissed by Santorini. And this one over here is South Beach. All right, let's do the Vesa over here on the right side. It smells good. I think it has a little bit of a vanilla scent to it. Hmm. I don't know if I'm just seeing what's underneath. There does seem to be a bit of red, but not as much as I think I'm about to deal with. Little nervous about this one. So let's do South Beach on this side of the face. Even just tap this off a little. If we're gonna be bronze goddesses, it's gonna be in July, right? So let's just see. How does this do? So it's actually not as orange as I thought it was going to be. I don't know if I really see any shimmer from the bronzer itself. I'm seeing some dewiness from the blush. I also went in with a really light hand, I think. So I'm doing just a little bit more down here. Oh yeah, that's looking orange. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Yeah, now that the light is shifting a little bit because I film in front of natural lighting, I'm definitely seeing was it Jersey Shore tan, like that orange color? Okay, 
Now that is a little bit layered up, but my goodness, because I have so much on that it's kind of like between the creams I have on and between everything I just put on, I don't know if I see a too much of a difference, honestly, because they both have very warm properties to them. Very, very warm properties. But this one does have a lot more orange base to it. And I can definitely see some like high points here of just like tangerine, a little on the Oompa Loompa side on that. Whereas over here, it's still very warmed up in bronze. Both sides actually are not showing texture, which is exciting, even though this one, the Ciate London South Beach has some shimmer in her. I was probably impressed with that last year and this is probably why it's still here that I was like, oh, it's not doing the negatives I assumed, but I'm not reaching for it. So let's, let's keep going to see how we feel by the end of this video. Next, I think it's gonna be, oh man, it's the highlighter. Mm. Okay, a highlighter that I recently thought I really liked because I love the color of it. I just really, really wish this did not have chunky gold sparkles in it. So this could make the whole face go crazy. Although I really do feel like compared to my neck right now, like this is feeling a little Jersey Shore to me at the moment. That's a throwback. And if you are too young to know that reference, that hurt. Okay, I'm just gonna be honest. But don't compared to here, because I actually do a lot of SPF on my face. So my face is actually pretty pale compared to my body. So I'm gonna have to warm up down here just so I don't want to um, jump off a bridge. Here, we're just gonna use the same bronzers for each side here. Just to give you an idea of what it looks like on the body. This is still staying on this side of the collarbones and chest, down the neck a little. We have to blend. Mm -hmm. Actually, layer up this one a bit more than I can the other one. No one is surprised. So let's jump into this highlighter I was talking about. This is the Bow Bay Beauty, and I love the color of this. This is a bronze highlighter. This is a great base, but the sparkles in it kill me because they get all over my face. This I've been trying to use the same brush for this, so that way I don't cross contaminate other brushes with the sparkles. And there's not a ton of sparkles, so it's not like you can't always know. My face already has so much illumination too. Oh yeah, I immediately see the sparkles on my textured skin. Don't know if you'll be able to pick it up on camera. This stinks because I really like the color of this. I just feel the grit, but this is like a beautiful bronzy highlighter, which would be great for summer, but it's the darn flex of gold glitter that gets stuck in my pores. Good on the body though. I've said that before. Do a little bit of do down. Yeah, I mean, my face still looks pretty orange in comparison to the body. So maybe we'll do a little bit more to blend. How did we get here? Okay, we're gonna just keep going. There's more fun to be had. Let's talk about some eyeshadows. I have two over here that I have recently gotten in the past six months. This one is the Iconic London ba Beachside Babe Eyeshadow Palette. And I find that the mattes really require a ton of buildup to really have much pigment, but they're not bad. It's just a lot of buildup. And then there is this Shayna B Miami little duo that's very pigmented, blends beautifully. This was also something I received in the last six months, but haven't really reached for it, but I remember liking the formula. So let's just play a little bit and see what we can come up with. Actually, before I get into the eye look, I'm gonna pop into this E-Balm from Persona. This is not something I've even really touched. I got it in the beginning of the year and she's very red based. This is not the kind of lippy I really love a lot. I just, I don't gravitate to a red lip that often, but I do think this is a good e-balm. So I think I need to do just a touch of liner and I wouldn't normally for an e-balm, but because it's so red, I feel like I need to do just a little bit, but I want to put something on the lips. It's feeling a little on the dry side. Oh my gosh, my face looks so orange. I just moved and shifted and my light moved. I was like, oh gosh, I'm going to look like an Oompa Loompa in this whole video. I just got to touch a lip liner on. Ooh. I think I liked the way that this looked when I blotted it down. It's just kind of too red for my liking. It's got a very natural scent to it, but it's not a very good scent. Kind of crayony. It has a little bit of a lip stain look right now, and there is still a bit of slip and hydration to it, so I'm gonna move back on to the eyes, but I don't know if I'm gonna keep this lip look on. I don't know. Let's hop into the palette, the 
iconic London Beachside Babe eyeshadow palette. I'm gonna go into the creamy shade. Now, honestly, you're not gonna see much of anything because anytime I've used this on camera, I, I feel like you can't see the buildup. I can in person, but I don't really see when I'm editing my videos, you seeing this color very much, but it is there and I like to lay something down before I move on. It does just give it a little bit of brightening. I try to focus on this inner corner just to kind of like wake up the eye of it. I've done like three or four, maybe more at this point, swipes through of this creamy shade and it's laying down nicely. I'm gonna come over here to warm sand just to build up something in the crease. Now I know again, all of the mattes feel like they require a ton of buildup. I am someone who likes a bit more pigment than this. I don't always need something to be super pow and pigmented because sometimes that's a detractor depending on the color and the type of, you know, formula you're dealing with. But something like this tends to take quite a while. So I feel like to go with the bronzy orangeness we got going, we definitely need to play with some more colors today. I just kind of wanted something down just to see and remind myself how this formula works, how it lays on top of itself before I went into too much color. But honestly, it takes quite a bit to build up, but you can get a neutral look from this. So let's get a little wild. Let's match our face a bit. Let's go over here to lounger actually. This is a more neutral based peachy tone. So I'm curious what this will look like if I just start laying this in. Even this more bold color doesn't have a lot. I'll do the same over here, but then I'm gonna go right into that orange because I just really wanna know how much more can I go with this? I'm just gonna go in the same brush. A little bit more vibrant of a shade than what's on my face. <laughs> This is a, a palette that I would say if you are scared of color, but you want to play in color, this could be a good introduction palette because you can't go too crazy with the mattes. Like you're going to be able to blend and build up to your own liking. And if it's too much, then you can just easily wear it back down. No big deal. Got a little too high there. So I'm just going to blend some of this down up here. And then we need to go into these shimmers because the shimmers are really where this palette comes to play, but I'm thinking before I do that with these shimmers, what I will do is pop over here into this tiny little Shayna B palette because I do find, or at least I remember, that this color really popped quickly. Looking on this brush here, this is just what I picked up with the tip. So let's just compare and contrast, shall we? Let's just see here. It's not super bold actually but it does have a good pigment to it. Oh wow, when you build her, this is just the second layer, then you see some color. Whereas the other palette, it's so much more muted. There's not a lot of payoff with the color. Whereas this, as you layer it, she builds to a, a bolder color. That's what I like to see personally out of a palette. So just, you know, food for thought, things to keep in mind. It doesn't make it a bad palette from the iconic London, it doesn't make it it just depends on preferences. Take golden hour, kind of a gold neutral. In the pan, it looks like it's gonna be mostly brown, but on my finger, it definitely has like a gold base to it. And look how yummy that looks on the finger. I just apply this in upwards motions. I can actually go back in and do a bit more. I think this color goes with the vibe of the rest of the look today. I'm surprised I can go in again. For some reason, I thought this was a one and done type shimmer. And it can be if you don't need too much, but I am a more is more kind of girl some days. And yeah, I think that is really beautiful. Is a touch of fallout, not a bunch. So I'm just gonna wipe this away with a fluffy brush. I really just think the shimmers are what stand out the best in this palette. I am curious though, so I'm going to wipe off my fingers and then I'm going to just stick my finger here into this shimmer from this palette. Cause this is more of like an, iridescent like you can see the gold but you also see a little bit of pink in it so I think I'm gonna do just the center here with this and see how that looks because I do have this very complimentary obviously color up in the cream it may not be too obvious on camera honestly because I feel like that color really is similar to it it's just giving a little bit more of the pink complexity as the light shifts 
on my lid. So I like that actually. I need something on the lower lashes though. You know what? Let's go back over here. Got a clean brush. We could see what this looks like. So I don't have anything down here. We're just looking to compliment. So I got six, count them, six eyeliners from BoxyCharm this past quarter. I just think that's too many. I only have two eyes. I don't need that many, but the Liner that I want to try again, Koiko Doll Paint Liners. I got one in black and one in brown. I think so I can kind of just stay with a little bit more of this bronzy summer look with some glow to it. I'm going to go to the brown gel eyeliner. And I'm not going to do the whole top lid. I'm just going to focus really to elongate the lid, give it a little bit of depth and warmth in this outer bit here. Because what I like about this, I think, is that it's more of a detailed tip, as you can see. I'm curious if I go in the waterline, would it stay? Mm, I think it is, we'll see. Not too bad so far. I got two different brow gels that are clear brow gels. I'm really not a big fan of brow gels. I feel like this is another filler product like liner, but I did get this one, so I do want to just see how it does again because i'm just like okay this is something else that i'm like am i really going to use it the only mascara that i've gotten from a boxy charm recently is one i know i like this is the uma salute the sun mascara i love this all right i can say as i'm looking at my makeup towards the end here now and things that had time to settle down i don't see a lot of things getting into my pores into the texture so that i'm pleased with as i'm kind of moving into these final phases I am seeing the sparkles up here when I'm in my mirror getting ready to do this though. And while it's not detracting or making it look like it's in my pores, it bunches and it bunches close to like texture that I naturally have. And it's not maybe adding to the texture, but it's bunching where I have texture. So it doesn't look complimentary by any means. I'm moving on to the lower lashes right now and I am definitely seeing more under eye creasing and makeup bunching under the eyes than I'm used to. And I'm sitting here going, what did I put on my face that would have done that? And the only things I can think of are maybe this skincare here and potentially this primer, but I didn't, I didn't like aim it up under it. So I'm wondering if this is competing with something else because in the mornings I love putting on my eye brightener. I do that every morning and that was hours before I did anything. So I'm just noticing little things here and there that are not looking great. So I'm gonna have to keep assessing, but I do think there's some things I can declutter maybe today. Let me finish up this look because there's some stuff that I'm like, I'm really not gonna reach for this. So let's, let's just get to it. Okay, friends, something I will always do if I have too much of something on my face that's kind of detracting, like a bronzer, because we all know today's video was to test a lot of different things that I normally wouldn't test together, right? These are gonna be things that are all second chance items. So like I would not normally put together such a bold looking cream bronzer on with another bold looking powder bronzer. That one was over here. So honestly, like, obviously some of this is for entertainment. Some of this is also for investigation, all of those things. So yeah, we can always make the obvious things of, well, don't wear these together and maybe it won't look so orange, obviously. Something I'm gonna do though is powder down with an old school Becca powder that I love that's really good at diffusing too much color. But this is what I used earlier too to try to get the tacky stickiness away and I was still feeling some tact. And also my forehead is looking really blotchy and orange on this side in particular I've noticed. So we're just doing a little bit here and there and I still need to do a spray down because that tends to make the makeup all look like one and maybe be a little less cakey, powdered, dramatic, you know, all the things. So let's do that and let's start talking what worked, what didn't, what actually is impressing me because I'm a little surprised by some of it. I am honestly surprised that this liner is working pretty well up in my waterline. 
that actually surprised me because not many work well in my waterline. I don't know if I just have watery eyes or what, but I was noticing as I was putting on my mascara, it definitely stayed where I placed it. I liked that it was very narrow of a tip so it could fit really easily up in there without getting in my eye because I'm a weirdo about that. I don't wear contacts or anything. I'm lucky I have pretty good eyesight. Well, really good eyesight considering I've never worn glasses because I was always like, if I have to touch my eye with a contact, I will fall over and die. It's just not something I feel like I can do. So when something is really easy to apply, I like that about that. So this really surprised me about these doll paint gel liners. So maybe this will stay the test of time through my collection versus the four to five other ones I received this past year. I'm also still super duper impressed with this tiny little palette. It's dirty, sorry. With the Shayna B Miami palette. This is a little duo here and I just think this is really good. I think that this performed beautifully, both the matte shade and the shimmery iridescent topper. I've even worn that shimmery iridescent shadow by itself. Looks great, I like it. I'm not convinced about this Iconic London, not only because of the mattes, but even today when I was putting on this shimmer shade, that Golden Hour is so beautiful. And I really love how it came together on today's look, honestly. I feel like that was the color I needed. My eyes look great today, but, 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 this was a lot of work and I was really surprised that I needed another dose of the shimmer. Not that that's a bad thing, but I really had in my head that that one was like a one and done. The mattes are really what gives me the most pause though, because they require so much buildup, even the more bold shades, like this is one of the bold shades. I've used this one quite a bit and they're not that bold. They require a lot of buildup. So if you are someone that really likes a neutral look that doesn't have a lot of vivid color, this could be your jam. Not really mine though. And I have to also think in mind, not just about this palette, but what do I already have in my collection? What will I want to reach for? And is this going to be in that top percent that I'm going to want? Or is this something that'd be better to give to someone else? So this one is definitely on the bubble for me. I might try it a few more times to see, do I really like it? But this second chance really made me realize, I don't know if I need this. I don't know if I need this at all. And before I was still like, mm, this is pretty decent, pretty decent. Now I'm more like, mm, compared to what else I have, I may not need her. I think I technically could also make that argument though for this little guy too, even though I think it's better quality than that big palette that is a little bit more of a known brand, obviously. I think this performs really well, but am I gonna reach for just a little pink to peach duo? Probably not often, but this one isn't really in the bubble for me at the moment. I feel like skincare, I need to do a little bit more work with that. And honestly, I have not played with this product at all, the Keo Life. Koa Life. It's a niacinamide booster, so I do want to give this some more time, but I do think that maybe it's how I'm choosing to use this. Like today, with the under eyes and the stickiness, it's still super sticky under here. Why is it so sticky under here? That for me has to have been this. So maybe if I use this at night, it would be a better thing than in the mornings. So this is something I'm gonna play with some more. I hope it doesn't break me out with how sticky it is though. Now, the stickiness, I was also like, could it be this e.l.f. primer, and it honestly could be. It could be, but I don't I don't usually put my primer up this high, but I do think skincare can work its way up there. Honestly, I need to give this a few more goes, but I have used this before with the same foundation I have on today, and all it did is make it stick all day and did great. The nose today, though, did start to fall apart, and that's why these videos can be a little bit more difficult when you're trying a bunch of second chance things, because you're like, what could it have been? Again, I'm still thinking the niacinamide booster was probably the issue because I haven't had an issue with this before. All right, let's talk about the bronzed elephant in the room, the face. I feel like now at the end of the video, she's not, she's not as crazy. Over the entire face right now has the Caramel Anastasia Beverly Hills bronzer. And this is clearly just, I, I just, it stinks when you get excited for a product and they only have so many colors. So. It's not even like this was a selection issue. It just seems like they didn't have a lot to choose from and it's just not gonna work for me. I wanted it to and I feel like I was able to quasi sort of a little bit make it work so I was keeping it to hopefully try again, use and it, this is not gonna work for me. It's too much, it's too bold, it's too orange red toned, it doesn't go with my neutral base. I need to just get rid of this. This is not going to stay in my collection. I think I'm gonna just declutter right now, I'll let you know this is 
this is getting decluttered. I'm not even going to put it back in the drawer. I'm going to put it in my giveaway pile. So there is that. Now, these other bronzers that I've had in my collection now for over a year, because I want to say it was last summer with BoxyCharm that we were getting bronzer after bronzer after bronzer. So I felt like I couldn't go through them, couldn't try them all on a consistent schedule to know what was working, what wasn't. But obviously the color story on these tells the story, right? Like this over here is very bold. And up on the forehead is where I was noticing when I was doing my lashes, I was like, oh my goodness, like it's even patchy up here. Could have been some of the base products, yes, or the cream product that was underneath this. However, I have to use such a light hand. I'm not mad at how my makeup looks right now. And that's where I think I was this time last year when I was trying these products. Because I was like, well, let's see. In the summer, this could work. It's got a shimmer to it, but honestly, it's not like the highlighter that I was trying with glitter in it. It actually just looks very like a healthy glow. But I don't reach for it. I don't put it on, I don't try it. And now that I do have it on, it doesn't look bad on my skin, but I also have stuff that I love and I've hit pan on. And I just don't know if this is for me. Now this Vessa one, that's also looking dirty cause the packaging just doesn't let it stay clean. This one seems like it's more approachable in a color story. And over here, when I am swatching it, it definitely wears more neutral, right? And I am a neutral undertone. So for me, that's going to work a bit better for my skin. But like, look at this. This is so dark over here. And this one is still like pretty golden, like not overwhelming. This one here, definitely, I'm not even looking at this. I'm talking about this right here. It definitely is darker. So I think what I'll do is I will keep this in my collection to play with some more. And this South Beach color from Ciate London is also getting decluttered. So that's two bronzy pieces I can just take out of my collection. So I have room to grow for things that I love or want to try. Yeah, even just looking on my hand right now, I love the pearlized glow of the Ciate London, but there are some sparkles that are golden in there that I'm seeing now that I'm really assessing. And that could also be adding to the texture I was noticing on this side because I was blaming all of it on the highlighter, but let's be serious. She earned it. I've tried this now several times and is, I liked it so much at first because of the coloration of it. And I love a bronzy highlighter. I feel like that just looks so beautiful, but I have some of these in my collection that work great without the big chunks of glitter. And again, I don't know if you'll see it, but with this section right here where I have some hyperpigmentation, has a bunch of the glitter just totally just grouped together right there. I also noticed it right up here where I have some texture on the top of my cheeks. It just makes me not want to reach for it. And I've been reaching for other highlighters and I don't need a ton of highlighters. As you guys saw in my highlighter, bronzer, blush, declutter, I have so many highlighters and I'm not even reaching for highlighters right now on a regular basis. So this one is also getting decluttered. I'm honestly torn about this whole blush situation because I went into this morning thinking, I think I know which blush I'm going to like and I'm stumped, truthfully. Like if we want to be really real about this, I thought this was going to be the home run that I was really looking forward to on the days that I use some of the lighter colors when I'm just wanting to have a natural look day. And it could be because right now I am tan and I did have on all of these wicked dark things on my face, but I did the blush first because I was worried about the blush overwhelming. So these weren't really a factor here. This blush, it was just so pale. And I'm like, is it because right now I actually have some glow to my skin naturally? Uh, but this, I felt like the multiple times I've tried it was too much and it gave me the sunburnt look but at least it gave me something. Whereas this was like very pale baby pink. So now I'm totally confused. Like I need that middle color piece to really make it work. I'm just sitting here going, do I keep both of them? Do I keep none of them? Am I gonna really reach for a creamy liquidy blush when I don't use them often? And it's mostly because I'm a creature of habit with how I do my makeup because I pretty much do foundations, concealers, go straight to powdering so I don't crease under the eyes because I'm an oily skin girl with bossy pores. You know what I'm gonna do actually? I didn't plan on doing this. Let me go into my blush caddy here and see, do I have anything else that's liquid that maybe I like more to decide, do I even need anything in this category? Let me see, holy buckets. I have four other blushes 
that are not powder. These are specifically the creamy, liquidy things. I can already see another like year end declutter coming and I'm just gonna have to be as ruthless as I was in the first half. Cause as I acquire things, as much as I like want to love these types of brands, it's like, if it doesn't work for me, am I gonna keep it? But could this work for me come fall and winter? This could be great. I need to chew on the blushes a little bit so I won't declutter anything yet, but this is what goes on in my brain when I'm decluttering. It's not just what's in front of me, it's also what's in my collection. I'm very aware of those types of things and I feel like that's just a nice way to keep things a little bit more balanced and checked, you know? Honestly, if this went away tomorrow, I wouldn't notice because I don't really use these. Um, this one's not bad, it doesn't make my brows feel like super stuck or anything, so that's fine. Also, this Persona E-Balm. I forgot how red it was. And it definitely smells like crayons or Play-Doh. Play-Doh, that is what I am smelling. Definitely a Play-Doh scent. Too red for me, not something I'm gonna love and use. And as much as I love the Persona line in general, I love Persona, I love their liners, I love their eyeshadow palettes so much. There's a lot of love from them. This color is unfortunately not my jam in the shade Manifest, so if I'm not gonna reach for it, I may as well declutter it. So I'm going to put that also in my declutter, didn't expect that, but here we are. So I think that's what I'm gonna do at this moment. I'm only gonna declutter those four things, but honestly, I didn't know if I was gonna declutter anything in this video, so I, that's already progress. And there are some things for me that are on deck that I might potentially declutter in the very near future, who knows? You know how you'll know? Stay tuned, be subscribed, because I give you guys all the dirty details all month long, every Sunday. I'm actually not mad at how the makeup turned out at the end of this. There was just a lot of like buffing down, trying to make it work, and I still feel a little tacky up under here. If you happen to be new to my channel, hi new friends. I really hope you take a quick moment to hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss out on the upcoming videos that I have going, and there are always some every single Sunday. Bye friends.